Alright guys, uh, this is David again, um, and for the next video that I'm going to do, um, I thought I would give you guys a little bit of draft strategy when it comes for redraft leagues. Um, if you haven't played fantasy before, as I said in my first video, I think redraft leagues is the best way to start. Um, they're simple, you don't have to do as much research, um, you only need to know like the top players on each team. And it's a real good way to just get your feet wet. Um, if you do want to practice as far as drafts, uh, get a feel for the draft software, get a feel for, you know, how you want to construct your team, stuff like that, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Um, the screen that I have here is from fantasypros.com, and it's a draft wizard. And you can basically set this up however you want. So, um, here, let me move this closer. You can set your draft position so you can practice picking in the beginning of the draft, in the middle, toward the end of the round. You can set the number of teams. So if you're playing in a 10-team league or a 12-team league, you can figure that out for yourself. Um, you can set the roster size. So you guys can, like, look ahead of time and see the size of the rosters of the leagues that you're going to be in and you can see how they're configured most leagues as i said in my last video you're gonna have one catcher then it's either going to be one at each position first base second base shortstop third base or they're going to do middle uh, corner infielders which is a combination of first and third base and middle infielders which is a combination of second base and shortstop there are some that even just generalize them just specifically as infielders. You do not see a lot in fantasy leagues where it designates by left fielder, center fielder, and right fielder. It pretty much is just outfielders. And it will generally be usually anywhere from three to five outfielders. You generally do not see six. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're going to do three outfielders. Then, as far as pitching goes, sometimes you'll see it where they have a few starters, a few relievers, and then just generalized pitchers, or you'll just see where they're all pitchers. Some of the more serious leagues, you'll see more of like five and five with no generalized pitchers. It'll just be like a five and five split. Most leagues do one utility, so I'm going to change this to one. All right. And then your bench size will vary depending upon how many people are in the league and stuff like that. So let's just basically do this based upon a 10-person league. All right, I'm going to back this up a little bit now so you can see the entire screen. And now you can... Now, if, this is completely free. This is a free service. You can use this as much as you want. Now, the only thing here is you're not going to be drafting against other live people. It's a simulation, so it's going to be based upon the computer. And what happens there is the computer is basically going to go by what we like to call chalk. Um, and what that means is it's always going to take the um, best player available. So they're not going to be looking for sleepers. They're not going to be looking for any kind of bounce backs or anything like that. So if you had a player who was hurt last year and his stats were terrible, he's going to get drafted really low in something like this. Uh, these superstars are going to be taken first. So while I like this um, as a way to kind of try and see, I use this if I want to go completely off the board. Um, you know, I have the number one pick and I don't want to take Mike Trout, which, you know, is kind of silly, but let me see what kind of team I can build if I went with a starting pitcher first, if I went with like a Chris Sale or, you know, a Clayton Kershaw, you know, or someone like that first pick overall, what kind of team could I build? Um, I like to play around with it, like if I'm going to be in the middle of the draft or the end of the draft or stuff like that, so... Um, you can use it for that. The best way to, and you'll see I have a couple of other uh, tabs up because I'm going to show you guys a couple of other things, is once the season gets a lot closer, 
you can go to like ESPN. Let's go into baseball. All right. And you'll see up here, it'll have rankings, so you can see like their top 300 right here. Let me get a little closer so you can see the top, top 300 rankings, the dynasty rankings, news, uh, stuff like that, all kinds of stuff. And then eventually, it'll have mock drafts that pop up. It'll have all kinds of news, so you'll be able to see what's going on. Look, you know, if you're a member of ESPN Insider, um, it'll have like fantasy baseball prospect rankings. So if you're in the more competitive leagues, you can do that. And all the main um, sites have them. So That's one of my leagues right there that I was playing in. So that's CBS. Home, Fantasy. And they'll do the same stuff here. So you can see rankings. It's got a lot of football up right now. Get rid of this video so that it pops up. You'll have to you'll have to deal with pop ups and stuff like that on a lot of these sites and stuff. They like to show videos of like analysis and stuff like that. So, but is it not gonna let me get rid of it? That's all right. Oh, there we go. All right. So. And then they have expert um, analysis for different sports and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can always go through. And all the sites will have um, we'll have mock drafts and stuff like that. And then once the season gets a lot closer, you'll be able to actually do mock drafts with other people, which is nice. Because then you can see how people are actually drafting. Um, so that's always good. So let's go back to the simulator. And we're actually going to run through a draft. Now, what I'm going to do is, as we get a little bit closer and the drafts are live, I'm actually going to uh, live stream on here. Um, I may not do it totally live, but I might tape it and then um, upload the video. I'm going to actually show you guys a couple of drafts that I do. Um, I'm going to uh, look for uh, leagues that I can enter that are basic leagues, redraft, I might do a couple of um, regular drafts, I might do an auction draft, so I can show you guys how that auction one works that I was talking about the other day, um, I don't, you don't really get keepers in the free leagues, because people don't usually do the free leagues more than one year at a time, so that makes it kind of um, hard to do a keeper league, but what I will do is, um, once my dynasty league drafts, start taking place, the prospect leagues, um, I will actually show you guys, um, what's going on in those, uh, so showing you guys what I'm looking for, um, how I look for my prospects that I'm drafting, stuff like that, so that way those of you who are in a little bit more serious leagues, you guys can then use that, maybe, you know, to build on the knowledge you already have, maybe some things that I'm looking for, you're not looking for, um, always can leave comments and stuff in the bottom because we can always learn from each other. I'm always learning. That's one of the great things about fantasy sports. Once you think you know it all, you're done. Um, you can always be learning different things, different techniques, different stats that you're looking for, um, especially in, like in baseball with all these advanced metrics. Um, I've been having a lot of long talks um, with some guys on Twitter and on Facebook about, you know, how to use war and how to use um, runs created and all these, like, advanced sabermetric um, stats that, that are out now. Um, I used to be a little bit more old school, but I'm trying to learn more. I'm always trying to evolve my game um, and my knowledge so that way I can, you know, improve my results. So, like I said, let's just come in here and... Let's open this up, and it's going to open up the draft program, and what we're going to do is, so we're picking first, so obviously, if you're picking first in a redraft league, you'd be crazy not to take Mike Trout. 
So you take Mike Trout, and now see the software just basically runs through all the picks until it's your pick again. So now over here on the right side of the page, it's showing your team. So now you know the positions you have to fill. Here it's showing the top players available. Over here it's showing the draft log. So that's what the teams, quote unquote, that are in the draft with you have taken. So again, this is just a really nice way to practice if you haven't um, used draft software before without having to worry about you know, other people and, you know, there's no time limit on this. Most of the time in drafts, you only have 90 seconds to make a pick. Here, you can do a little bit more research. You can look at things. If you scroll down on the screen here, you'll see that they list the top overall. They list it by, um, by position, stuff like that. And then as the players get picked, they get crossed off. You can also toggle up here where it says high drafted players. So then as they get drafted they not only will disappear but it will also move people who wouldn't have been in the list earlier to a higher position so now you can see them so like i said so now let's say you just want to play around a little bit and you're like okay we took mike trout first most of the time you're going to go offense early in a draft because pitching is very deep because while you may only have one catcher on a team that starts, you're going to have five starting pitchers on every team. So my view is it's much more important to take offense than it is to take pitching. So I normally wait on my pitching, especially being as there are always prospect pitchers that come up every year. And if you know the right ones, you can wait on them because most people in redraft leagues, they don't take it too seriously and they just do the superstars. So, if you know a little bit about the prospects, you can really have an advantage. And this year, I can actually draft pitching a little bit earlier than I would normally. Because I know about a few prospect hitters that are going to come up very, very quickly in um, the year. They're going to get held down for a little bit because of service time. In baseball, if they only have a certain amount of days in the major leagues during the year... It gives them, it gives the team an extra year until they hit free agent. So a lot of times, if you have, a, you know, a stud in your minor leagues, if you keep him down the first two or three weeks of the year and call him up at the end of April, it'll give the team a whole extra year of control. So, and the three that that's going to be really, really um, applicable to this year is going to be. I mentioned him in my last video, Peter Alonso, the first baseman for the New York Mets. Um, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's a third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays, and Eloy Jimenez, who's an outfielder for the Chicago White Sox. You can, if you're in a redraft league this year, um, you can take other positions a lot earlier than you normally would and try and wait on first base, third base, and one of your outfield spots because I guarantee you, you can probably nab one of those three guys, or possibly all three of those guys. Probably, I would say anywhere from the sixth to eighth round. Now, what that means is, let's go down and let's look here. So, third base. So, if you look at third base, the top four third basemen have already been taken, and the sixth ranked third baseman have already been taken. Okay, look, here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. here. He's actually ranked 10th. So you can wait another round or two on him. Okay, now first base. If you look, Peter Alonso isn't even in the top 20 or 21. Okay, so... You can wait a long time on him. You could probably wait till past the tenth round to be looking for a guy like him, unless you happen to have a couple of Mets fans in your league, then they might try and grab him early. Which is always why before the draft starts, if you're in a regular draft just with random people online, I'm always the first thing I always do is I always ask in the little chat that's always going to be there, "Hey, who's everyone's favorite team?" Because if I see that there's two or three Mets fans in the draft. 
I'm probably going to reach for Peter Alonso a little earlier because I know those guys are going to be trying to grab him. Same thing if there's someone from Toronto who's going to be looking for Vladimir Guerrero or the Elo Jimenez from um, the Chicago White Sox. Now, again, if we look at outfield, there's so many good outfielders in baseball that, again, you're going to be able to wait on Elo Jimenez because, look, he's not even in the top 27 if we hit show more. <laughs> Look, he's not even in, like, the top 60. But now let me show you guys something. Go back to CBS. Go over to my teams. Because I happen to be in a Dynasty League where I have all three of these guys on my roster. Because I've drafted really well in the past. So let's scroll down. Now, the good thing about CBS and stuff like that with these leagues is they put projections up. These stats over here, these are what they're projected to do this year. Okay, so let's highlight Eloy Jimenez, who they are projecting to hit 265 with 19 home runs and 63 RBIs. That's pretty good production. If you look, I'm going to point to it right here where it says 195. That's their overall ranking in fantasy baseball. So if you can get a top 200 player in fantasy baseball, and you can get him in the 15th round, where if he's not ranked in the top 60, I mean, you're looking at the fact that if you have the roster setups of what I set those specs up for in that fake draft. You're in a 10-team league with only three outfielders per. You're not even... And then you have a six-man bench, so you're probably drafting one or two outfielders for your bench. Elo Jimenez should probably go undrafted in that league. So if you can grab him in the late rounds of that draft and you can get that kind of production... Again, now that just lets you go for better players in other positions earlier. You're going to build yourself a much stronger team. So now let's look at Vlad Guerrero. Okay, so Vladimir Guerrero, Toronto. He's ranked, he's projected to be ranked 76th, okay, in baseball. Because he's projected to hit 280 with 25 home runs and 78 RBIs. Okay, that's monster production for a rookie. I mean, he's probably going to be the American League Rookie of the Year next year. So if he can do that, if you can be grabbing him, that's also why he's ranked as the 10th best third baseman on that draft. So if you can grab him in the maybe, I probably based on those rankings, would probably go and try and grab him a little bit earlier. I'd say maybe like the 6th or 7th round. I'd probably go, again, if I'm drafting at the top of the draft, I'm going to go for one of my studs. I'm going to go for a Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, Christian Yelich type stud outfielder, guy who's going to be considered for an MVP. Um, those are who I'm looking for first. If I'm drafting the middle of the round, probably looking for a good starting pitcher, maybe a really good infielder if I'm drafting at the bottom of the round where I can wrap. You know, if you get that 10th or 12th pick, depending on how many teams you're in the league and you're picking back-to-back -back picks, you're looking for two really solid players at key positions. Uh, something like catcher, something like second base, shortstop, where the depth isn't as much as it is, like first base, third base, outfield, stuff like that. So now let's come up, because I actually was messing with this lineup earlier today. And I had... Where's Peter Alonso? I tell you... Oh, you know what? I don't... Oh, yeah, I do have him on this team. There he is. Okay, so Peter Alonso, you'll see right there. Let's come over and see. He's going to be ranked as the 210th best player in baseball, because he's going to be hitting 256 with 23 home runs and 69 RBIs. Now, what you also have to remember is a lot of these projections may have come out right as the season ended uh, for last year. 
So what it also doesn't take into account are the moves that an individual team makes. And the Mets this year have added Robbie Cano. They've added Jed Larry. They've added, you know, quite a few players, Wilson Ramos. So their lineup is going to be a lot deeper than um, maybe first thought. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow him more opportunities for RBIs. If they're batting him in the middle of the lineup, if they're batting him fifth or sixth, he's going to have protection underneath him in the lineup. So pitchers are going to have to challenge him a little bit more with fastballs. They're not going to be able to throw as many breaking balls to him. So that's just going to increase his stats a little bit more. So I personally feel he's going to outperform those projections. Um, you take the Vladimir Guerrero one. He's he's a great hitter. I've been following him for a long time. He, if you are familiar with baseball at all, his father uh, just got inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. And there was a saying that he, there was never a pitch Vlad Guerrero ever saw that he didn't want to swing at, and that was senior. Well, junior is pretty much the same way, um, and he can hit it. He he can flat out hit the ball. So I think he's going to at least hit those expectations. Eloy Jimenez, the, the White Sox are a rebuilding team, but they're in the market right now for either Manny Machado or Bryce Harper. And if they can get those guys... That's going to just deepen their lineup. Now, the only thing you want to be aware of is if you do a draft early, if the White Sox sign a Bryce Harper, that's an outfield spot. So that's a spot that may not be available for Ilya Jimenez to get called up to. So you want to pay close attention to that because if you spend the draft pick on him and then he doesn't get called up, it's kind of a wasted roster spot. So there's always that little bit of danger in drafting two earlier teams in the in the offseason and picking prospects like that. If you're going to go for some prospects like that, you want to wait to draft your teams probably until spring training starts because by spring training, everybody will be signed. Um, so... That's pretty much basic strategy for redraft leagues. Um, like I said, as the mock drafts come up and as the, you actually can join leagues, because most of these sites you can join as many free leagues as you want. I know on ESPN you can have as many as like 15, 20 teams or something like that. Um, I will actually uh, do a live draft and post it on here uh, once I'm done with it. And, you know, I'll show you guys how I do this in real time and what I'm looking for and how I'm thinking and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, drop them down in the comments box. Uh, please like, share, uh, subscribe. Um, I'll be back probably in a few days with um, another video. I'm going to start breaking down um, the teams not really sure if I'm going to do a team a day or a division a day. I'm going to try and do it where I handle a whole division every day. Only because it'll, it'll mean for a tiny bit longer of a video. But it'll mean less videos overall. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, and like I said, yeah. Like, share, subscribe. Do all that kind of good stuff for me. If you have any questions, please again just uh, drop it down in the box. All right, and we will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.